first round hit at a thousand meters. It sounds like legend, a big cat in cover, a flash, and a tank across the field goes still. But on the Tiger, that moment wasn't magic. It was a process. Optics that let you see, a gun that shot flat and tight, and a crew drilled to turn range math into one clean squeeze. Tonight, we'll unpack that process and see why Tiger crews so often hit first. Hitting first isn't just about raw accuracy. It's about solving faster than the other guy and needing fewer corrections when you do. If your crew and hardware can get a solid range, hold a steady sight picture, and set the right elevation fast, you shoot first. That first round lands close enough to kill. The second is just a formality. Start with what the gunner actually saw. Through the TZF telescopic sight, the image was bright and the reticle was clean. That matters. German optics were more than bragging rights. They delivered two practical advantages that compound under stress. Contrast and choice of magnification. Contrast means edges appear a fraction sooner, especially in haze, dust, or thin smoke. Sooner edges mean sooner target confirmation, sooner range estimation, and an earlier shot window. Choice of magnification matters just as much. Low power to find and stabilize the image quickly. Higher power to refine the aim point without losing the target. The Tiger's sight allowed that shift without leaving the eyepiece. It didn't make the gun stronger. It made the crew earlier, earlier to see, earlier to decide, earlier to shoot. At 1,000 to 1,500 meters, you're not aiming at a tank-shaped blob. You're picking a point, lower mantlet, turret ring, the flat of a glassy. A steady, uncluttered sight lets the gunner hold that point instead of swimming around it. And when the platform is calm beneath him, the crosshairs don't skate. Small detail, large effect. The better you can place the aim, the less you depend on luck. Now give that sight a gun worth trusting. The Tiger's 88mm KWK-36 didn't just punch hard. It shot consistently. With the standard APCBC round, its path to a kilometer was flat enough that small range errors didn't punish you much. Imagine two lines of fire, one a steep arc, the other much flatter. If your range call is off by 50 or 100 meters, the flatter path still lands close to where you aimed. That's what the 88 gave its crew, a forgiving trajectory and tight groups, so a good aim felt like solid engineering, not bravado. A gun that prints small groups means a correct range produces an impact that stays within the bounds of a tank-sized target at typical battle ranges. But even a forgiving gun and a good reticle are useless if you don't know the range. That's where the real work starts. The simplest tool is built right into the site, stadiometric ranging. Those tiny marks aren't decoration. They're milliradians, mills for short, angular measurements that let a gunner turn size into distance without a tape measure. If a typical tank hull stands about 2.3 meters tall, and in your sight it spans about 2.3 mils, you're at roughly 1,000 meters. That's not perfect, but it's good enough to set a first elevation and get a round down range with confidence. You estimate a known dimension of the target, say the height of a Sherman's hull, check how many marks the silhouette spans in your sight, and do the quick division to get a distance that's good enough. It isn't pretty math. It's fast. And once the commander calls that range, 1,000, the gunner dials the elevation drum to match, refines his hold on the exact spot he wants, and the loader is already ramming the right round home. Watch the choreography in your mind's eye. The commander finds and names the threat, judges range from experience, landmarks, or the stadiometric read, and gives a crisp fire order. The gunner is already slewing to bearing, already clicking the range drum, already pressing the reticle onto a vulnerable plate. The loader hears the ammunition type and has Panzergranate 39 in hand before the turret even settles. The driver keeps the hull steady, no rocking, no last second lurch, to protect that precious sight picture. Four men, one routine, 
and a gun that rewards them for doing it right. That's what Hits First actually looks like. Training scores from the period don't read like legend. They read like repetition. Crews ran acquisition, range, and fire at set distances until flipping magnification, measuring in mills, and setting the drum became reflex. Allied intelligence reports often complement the German focus on first-round observation and correction, another way of saying the first solution was already close, so the second came home. Trials from the period help translate that routine into numbers. On a captured range, British crews famously put a tight string of hits on a plate about the size of a briefcase, at roughly 1,200 yards. That doesn't mean every battlefield shot looked like a range trial. But it does show what the system could do when range and aim were roughly right. A very small group at long distance, the kind of precision that can turn a first round into the deciding shot. Bring it back to combat conditions and the picture holds. If the enemy shows you a full silhouette at a thousand meters, if visibility is decent and the commander's range call is within a hundred meters either way, that first round from the 88 is likely to land on or very near the aim point. If it doesn't finish the job, the correction is small. Up a click, left a hair, and the second shot arrives before the other crew has stabilized their own solution. First round hit isn't a boast. It's what happens when the inputs are steady and the system is tuned to make the most of them. Of course, there are limits, and crews felt them the moment the picture got messy. In bad weather or haze, your stadiometric read collapses because you can't see clean edges to measure. If the target is jinking hard or popping in and out of dead ground, you're no longer solving a simple range problem but a lead problem, and that first shot is really a bracket. Misjudge the range by 300 meters, and even a flat shooting gun will drop low. In those conditions, the Tiger's intrinsic virtues are still there, but the crew's procedures become even more important. You don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your training. Ammunition plays its part too. Tungsten APCR flew flatter but was rare. The workhorse APCBC was reliable, but reliability isn't magic. The Tiger could build a reputation, not bend physics. What crews trusted wasn't mystique, it was repetition. Commander calls, gunner dials, loader feeds, driver steadies, fire, observe, correct. Do it the same way every time and the gun stops feeling like a blunt cannon and starts to feel like a long-armed rifle. The sight gives a precise picture, the gun forgives small human errors, and the team turns range and aim into one smooth act. That's how a 56-ton machine becomes quick. Seen that way, first round hit at a thousand meters is less a legend and more a checklist. Can you see clearly enough to pick a precise aim point? Can you call the range close enough that the 88's flat arc still keeps you on steel? Can you keep the platform still so the reticle means what it says? And can four men do their jobs in the four seconds they've practiced a hundred times before? When those answers are yes, the first shot looks inevitable. It's worth remembering what this did to the other crew. If you're across the field in a late war allied tank, your own solution is coming together at the same time, range guess, traverse, settle, breathe. If their first shot is already close enough to crack armor or ring the turret, your correction is arriving under shock and splinters. The duel is no longer even. Opponents learn to strip away the tiger's early edge. They use smoke to kill contrast, deception to corrupt mill estimates with partial silhouettes and false heights, and flanking approaches that force the turret to keep swinging, complicating precise measurement and any stable firing pause. They fired and moved to break the gun's rhythm. None of this made the optics any worse, it simply forced the whole aiming system to work harder, which cost seconds. And those extra seconds were exactly what you needed to steal the first shot back. Hits first isn't just about where the round lands, it's about who gets to think clearly after the first exchange. So the mystique has a simple core. 
The Tiger hit first because its glass let gunners aim at something specific, its gun kept shots tight and on a forgiving arc, and its crew turned range estimation into a practiced reflex. When the picture broke, fog, jinking targets, bad calls, the mystique broke with it. But when the picture held, and the enemy showed silhouette, the process worked exactly as designed. The crosshair settled, the trigger broke, and very often, the first round was the only one that mattered. So when we look back at the Tiger's reputation for early hits, the explanation is not mystical. It's glass, geometry, and well-trained crews in a hull and turret that supported them. Does that mean the Tiger always hit with its first round? Of course not. But they happened often enough to stick in memory and reports because the Tiger system pushed probability to the front of the engagement, raising the odds right where it mattered, on the first solution. In the end, there was no magic to the Tiger's reputation, only a system that made hard shots feel simple when men inside it did their jobs. Optics you could trust, a gun that forgave small errors, crew drills that turned numbers into steel. Put those together and first round hit at a thousand meters stops sounding like legend and starts sounding like what well-trained crews do on a good day.